Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, AJ Hogue, where AJ's more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's AJ with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Hi, I'm AJ Hogue, the author of Effortless English, Learn to Speak English Like a Native. I will train you to speak English fluently, to speak English effortlessly, to speak English confidently. You can do it. You will do it when you commit to my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. <coughs> Excuse me. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Go there. Join and commit to my VIP program. I promise you, you will succeed. You've just got to commit. Don't quit. To my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Today's topic is travel, travel, world travel, using English, right? Because one of the great, of course, one of the great reasons, and when I say great, I mean most enjoyable, one of the most enjoyable benefits of being fluent in English, speaking effortlessly, is that it's so much easier to travel around the world, the entire world, is open to you when you speak English. I'm going to talk about some of my own travel experiences using English to visit so many countries in so many parts of the world because English is the international language uh, in general. It's the international language, but uh, it's especially the international language of travel, also business and science and other things too, but travel. And travel is just so amazing. Travel is special. Travel can totally change your life, can open your mind, can send your life into a, a new and amazing direction when you travel. So I want to talk about travel, uh, the benefits of using English for travel, and also I'll, I'll talk a little bit about how I like to travel and some of my recommendations to make travel more meaningful. Because uh, there are many different ways to travel, right? There's kind of what I might call the typical American vacation mentality or just the general vacation mentality where you just go, you just see the famous places, and then you go home. That's okay. It's okay. But I think there are other ways to travel that are more meaningful, that are more special, that are more fun, that are more interesting, that are more challenging and that will really bring greater benefits. Now, we're live on YouTube today. I'll just say a quick hello to everyone, as usual, joining us live on YouTube. Good to see you all, as usual. Anand, good to see you. So a lot of our regulars, as usual. Nasser, good. Wanang, good to see you. I saw Liza already on there. Hassan, Habib, nice to see you. Very nice. So a lot of our regulars and some others as well. Welcome, whether you're a regular or whether you're new. Igor, good to see you. N, good to see you. All right, guys, let's uh, get into the topic a little bit. Evgeny, good to see you. Um, travel. So, of course, you know, English opens up international travel. You all know this. Uh, you know, I've traveled to so many countries where I did not speak the language. Now, it's cool if you speak the language. You know, again, like I love, I really love Steve Kaufman. Uh, I'm talking about Steve Kaufman recently because I'm back on his website now, using his website again. And um, he's just such a nice guy. And I really appreciate the, you know, the early experiences I had with him and, and uh, the influence he had on me. And I'm, I'm always impressed by his language learning and it's great you know if you can learn 17 languages and you can travel to 17 or more countries where those languages are spoken of course that is the the deepest and best way to travel you'll you'll connect with the local people so well but on the other hand <laughs> steve's a special person and most of us are not going to learn 17 languages and still, most of us, uh, many of us, would like to see many different countries. We'd like to travel around the world. We'd like to connect with people in all these countries. So if we look at just the efficiency, 
efficiency what's the what's the most useful language the one most useful language to travel the most places and meet the most people it's obviously english in general english because you can speak english with people you can find english speakers everywhere around the world you know i have met people in mexico many people traveling in mexico that were learning english or knew some english and i could meet some wonderful people and travel around mexico now i do know a little spanish so that helped too uh, but mexico and guatemala i also used english a lot because my english is much better than my spanish obviously uh, here in asia you know i meet people in japan all the time who speak english a little bit or a lot so I connect with people here with English. In Korea, I met people who spoke English. When I lived in Thailand, lots of people, especially Bangkok and Chiang Mai, the tourist areas, the more famous places, the big cities, a lot of people spoke English. So I had many Thai friends, and I still have Thai friends that I met, and we speak English together. You see the point, right? Indonesia, India, Nepal, and then all through Europe, same thing. With this one language, I have been able to travel and survive in all these parts of the world with English and maybe a little bit of the local language, a few words and phrases, but mostly English. And that's fantastic. It makes it efficient. It means you're learning a really useful language. And that's, of course, why everyone's learning it and why everybody's studying English all around the world, because it is so useful. But what's so great about it is more than useful. It's inspiring. It's wonderful. Because when you leave your own country, and you go to a new place, and you travel, and you meet the local people, you see how they live. You try their food. You learn about their culture. You learn about their religion. You learn about their philosophy. You learn about their history, their art. You see, um, you know, their families. How are they with their families? What are they like? The family life, their working life. What's that like? It's amazing because it opens your mind. It opens your mind a lot. Now, some things when you travel, you realize you will appreciate about your own country more. You travel the world and you realize some things about your country are amazing and great. Right? I, I had this experience. Some things about America are wonderful and amazing and really you know, right at the top for me, right at the top of the world, some best in the world, in my opinion. On the other hand, you also get a wider view because you realize other things are better in other countries. There are other things in other countries that you will respect and appreciate. And you'll say, wow, that's really interesting. I think they have a better way of life for this. Maybe my country, uh, you know, we can learn something. Maybe we can improve. Or maybe just in your own life, you can change your mind. You know, I've done this. This has helped me make big improvements in my life just traveling because I realize, well, I don't have to follow the American way for everything. For some things, I follow the American way if I think it's the best way for me and my family. But many other things, I think, well, I've seen better in other countries. I think the Japanese have better family life, not just Japan, but many countries, closer families. Uh, in some countries like India, the, the families, not just the immediate family, but the extended families, the cousins, the uncles, the aunts, the grandparents, the nephews, the nieces, they're much, much closer. They have these big, big, big families. That's great. I'm inspired by that. And I try to work harder so that my big family all my uncles and aunts and nephews and cousins are closer together also because I think it's a better way of life. It's better. I learned from India. I learned from Indians and Nepalese and, of course, many other places in the world are like this. And that's better than America. Much better. Food, right? There's much healthier food. Japan has better food than America. Not even close. Not even close. Japanese food is, I think, better quality, better tasting and healthier and they, people live longer. I like that people here are so active and they walk. And even when they get older, they're 60, they're 70, they're 80, they're 90. They're still active, walking and doing things all the time. Wonderful. I've learned from that. I've also just met amazing, great people. I've mentioned before Europe. What I like about Europeans, um, especially, you know, like Spain and Italy, is they have a better balance of life. They, I think they have a better balance with work and uh, social life 
and uh, what you might call leisure or relaxation. They balance it better. Americans are too much workaholics. Japanese are super workaholics. And uh, I think the Europeans do a better job of that. I think they have a better uh, balance in their life. They know how to enjoy things in kind of moderation and appreciate the small, beautiful things in life better. I've learned from Europeans in that way. You know, and on and on and on. You can learn so much when you travel and then you bring these good things into your own life, into your own family, and make them better and richer. So that's one of the many benefits of travel. Another great thing about travel, I'm just thinking about this recently, is that um, sometimes when you have a hard time in your life, let's maybe you have a crisis, maybe you uh, are confused, maybe you don't know what to do with your life, maybe you're just really sad, maybe you got a divorce or some breakup or some bad thing has happened in your life and you're feeling terrible, maybe you're just stuck doing the same thing every day. You have no motivation, no inspiration in your life. Travel's a great way to change all of that very quickly. Go to a new country, do something very different, have an adventure, meet different people. Every day's a surprise, unexpected. This will shake your brain. It will shake your emotions. It will bring you alive again. It will make your creativity wake up, your energy wake up. It's amazing. Travel's great for that. Great for that. To shake up your life in a good way, bring you back to life when you've had a really hard time. So I've always done this in my life when I've been in a time maybe, especially in the past, maybe a you know, hard, hard time in my life, maybe feeling depressed and bored and stuck and going nowhere, no creativity. Then I'll just take a trip and travel to some other country. And usually I, tr I try not to plan. I don't plan my trips too much. I want surprises during my travel. Sometimes the surprises are difficult, not so good. And, but many times they're wonderful. And then this just completely changes everything. And I wake up and my, I, I feel like I come alive again. Like I have that enthusiasm, that excitement for living again when I travel that way. And this, anyone, this can work for anybody. Now, based on my many years of travel, I have a little bit of advice for you. So here's my advice. So advice number one, do a little research, of course, especially about before you travel somewhere, research about the crime and the, like, the cheaters. That's the good thing you want to research about. You definitely want to know about that because, you know, in every country... You know, it's actually quite similar in most countries. It's the same kinds of things, but the same kinds of cheaters. Taxi drivers, right? Taxi drivers will try to charge you too much money. Taxi drivers will try to take you to a different place or drive around for a long time to make the meter go up. Um, shop owners will try to cheat you. People on the street will try to cheat you. There can be dangerous criminals in some places, especially big cities. So yes, you need to research this. You need to know this for safety. That's what you should plan. And maybe plan your budget. Also a good idea. So that's what I recommend for your planning and preparation when you travel. On the other hand, on the other hand, don't plan too much. It's my best advice to make travel more magical for you. Don't plan too much. Don't plan every hotel stay. In fact, I recommend don't even plan every city or town. Leave your trip more open. Yes, you buy your plane ticket and arrive. Imagine you're going to America. So maybe you decide, okay, I'm going to go to New York City. I'll arrive in New York City. I have three weeks. So plan to fly to New York, learn about all the cheaters and criminals in New York, of course, but don't plan too much. Don't like plan every day, like uh, the first day I will go here, second day I will do this, third day. Leave it open, leave it open. You, make, you can have a guidebook, but leave it more open. You know, maybe you find a hotel for your first few nights. That's useful. But then after that, leave it open. Maybe you go to New York, you don't like New York, and you think, I'm going to go to Florida. I'm going to go to San Francisco, whatever. You can just, I'm going to go camping. You can just see what happens. 
because you might meet somebody and then you get a totally new idea. So if you plan too much, then you don't have any flexibility. But when you plan less, your trip's more open. You're more open to surprises. You're more open to interesting experiences. So that's my advice. I do this now. I really don't even use guidebooks anymore. Not much. Occasionally I'll use a guidebook, but usually I'll do my basic research before I go. And then I just see what happens. So that's number one. If you're just traveling and just want to kind of loose and free and lots of surprises and meet lots of people, that's really cool. Another thing, another way to, a cool way to travel, which I do a lot now, as you know, is to do some kind of, um, join some, have some kind of special purpose to your travel. So not just to travel around vague, but a purpose. For example, the Camino de Santiago is a famous one that I did recently, like four years ago. So that's a, that's a pilgrimage. So there are many people doing it. You're not just traveling around Spain to see famous places, you're doing an important event, uh, an important path that has a long history, that has a deeper purpose. And then you meet other people doing the same thing. You share the same purpose with them. This creates much stronger connections, a much deeper travel experience. You know, like if you're Muslim and you do the pilgrimage to Mecca, you're going to meet people. It's super powerful for you, right? If you're a Buddhist and you go to Bogaya, you do a, or even a Japanese, you could do the Shikoku pilgrimage. Or you go to Varanasi. Or, or do the Camino de Santiago. Or go to Rome, whatever, right? It doesn't have to be religious, though. It just could be anything like that where there's a purpose. Some people in America, they'll, for example, they'll do the Appalachian Trail. That's a huge one. Now, that takes a long time, and it's not easy, but that's a cool, special purpose, and you'll, it'll be an amazing experience, much deeper and much more powerful than just uh, an average visit to the United States. Uh, another thing you can do when you travel to make it more special is focus your, your travel on some activity or hobby or something you love a lot. Like if you're a musician, you're a guitarist, you could travel someplace, maybe just visit some music festivals uh, and try to meet other musicians and you could play with them and, you know, sit in with them and jam with them and connect with other musicians and visit music clubs, bring your guitar with you. And again, your experience of travel will be so much more deep if you do that. Or maybe you're a runner, you're more into running, you're... So when you travel, again, if you visit America, you know, visit cities and enter races. You can find online many calendars for races. Run marathons in different cities or 10Ks or 5Ks even. And then you can meet other runners in those cities. It's another way to connect with people with your shared hobby of running or music or art or anything, really, right? You see what I mean? But in all these ways, it makes the travel more deep and it helps you connect with more people. You connect with other travelers and you connect with local people more. So this is, I believe, this is a much more um, rewarding uh, and uh, enjoyable way of traveling, meaningful way of traveling, than just visiting famous sites. Honestly, I, I'm kind of bored with that now in my life, but you know, I've traveled a lot of years, okay? So now when I go somewhere, I don't usually care about visiting the famous places very much. I really don't care so much. You know, I'll go see the really famous spots, but I don't care about seeing all the famous buildings. I don't even usually go to museums very much anymore. I'm more interested in this other kind of travel because I found it's just so much more interesting. And again, you're so lucky because as you're learning English and getting better with English, you can use English for all of this, for all of these countries, for all of the world, and you make you might make friends for your whole life. It's really fantastic and have memories that are powerful for your whole life and have experiences that change your life and make your life much better. So this is these are all the reasons I think travel is so powerful and English especially is useful for that. 
All right, let's go to the comments and questions. Alexi says, does it make, uh, this is an English question. Does it make sense to read old complex books if my goal is to improve my vocabulary? Ah, right. Five days ago, I borrowed a book and the author's O. Henry. It's so difficult. Should I fill my brain with these words? No. Read the old philosophical books in your own language. For English, read clear, understandable ones. Now, older is okay, but probably modern is better when you're talking about vocabulary and uh, improving your English in general. So, right, it's a little bit different purpose, right? So for, you know, like life meaning, read those old books, but probably read them in your own language until you're quite advanced. But... um. For just English learning, more modern is better. So very ex that's a really good, important question, actually. Very clear. Ibrahim Ali, I totally agree with his comment here. He says, just one month of traveling, you'll learn much more than spending one whole year in your country. So true. You know, I say this all the time, but... Um, well, I can think of many of my trips. My first trip to India was two and a half months. It felt like a year or more. There were so many new experiences. Every day, surprising new experiences. Every hour of that trip was something new and challenging and interesting. More new experiences in two and a half months than probably two and a half years in my normal life. So it felt like so long. You know, in America or even, you know, in my normal life, two and a half months can be quite fast, right? You can, it seems like, oh, so quick, it's gone. But when you're traveling like that, it can feel very long indeed. Uh, the, the Camino de Santiago, it's the same way. It was only 32 days. 32 days on the Camino, but every day feels like a whole week because you're me. So every, every, again, every step you take, every hour is a new town, a new, new things, new experiences, new people. So it's so true. Such, so powerful. Vladislav says, I agree with you, AJ. I like traveling. Sometimes I go for a long trip, sometimes just short trips for weekends to cities of my country or abroad. Even short trips like two to days, two to three days really helps. That's true. Exactly right. I also do that. I follow this exact pattern myself. So sometimes, you know, in your normal life, you're busy, you got your working, all these things. You don't have time for a long, long trip. But even these little weekend trips can make a difference. So, you know, like in Japan here, we'll go to an onsen. We'll go to some nice place in Japan for, a, for just a weekend. Um, go over to Kyoto for one night. Even those kinds of little trips uh, are also quite nice. I agree. Christy uh, is right about this. You're lucky being a native English speaker. You can live almost anywhere around the world by teaching English since English is an international language. Well, I, yeah, I was lucky. I mean, I don't do it now, but I, I, all my teachings online like this, but um, which is also lucky. <laughs> uh, I can still live anywhere. But uh, yeah, when I was kind of poor, uh, this helped my travel a lot because I could go and live in a country and get a job there teaching English. That's how I lived in Korea and Japan and Thailand. MSCTV says, I was really shy before my long travel adventure, three months. That's a nice time period. And he's got a, uh, he or she has a picture of Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco. I, that's that's kind of like my that's what I like when I travel. I like to take about three months, maybe sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Marco Senna gives me uh, seven ninety uh, in maybe I'm not sure are ru rubles, 
Anyway, Marcos, thank you very much for the super chat. I appreciate that. Super chats are donations. So anyway, MSC TV says, um, as you said, traveling helped me a lot. I became more confident. Yes, overcome shyness. Me too. Me too. I was my first trip to India. Um, I was very shy, much more shy than now, much lower confidence. I never really done anything like that by myself, like really had to make all those decisions by myself, something so different and new and challenging. And, uh, you know, I, mean, I was very stressed out the first couple of weeks in India. Uh, it was so different, and I found it so stressful, especially because I was shy. And uh, that may be why, one reason I got really sick. <laughs> but uh, it was, then I got, was into the hospital after my second week. I was in the hospital three days. Uh, but then, you know, with time, um, day after day, my confidence got higher and higher. And by the end of the trip, I was much more confident, much more strong socially. I'm still quiet generally, but I'm more confident now. And it will travel will help this so much. It's, uh, it, it really builds your confidence when you travel like that. I totally agree. Good, good point. I, this is a topic I love. You know, I just, this is one of my great loves and passions is travel. Oh, Lukash, I'm sick. I'm sorry to hear it, Lukash. You saved me during my illness. I spend with your English eight hours per day. I'm sorry to hear you're feeling bad. Try, try doing a fast. Try doing some fasting. You could try dry fasting if you want, like 24 hours or 48 hours. It might help you. I don't know what your illness is. But uh, anyway, keep doing it. Oh, Bo Lee also donates $299. Uh, thank you very much. That's very nice, Bo Lee. Appreciate your donation. And Lukash, I hope you get well soon. But meanwhile, yeah, use it as a way to do some intensive English. I'm, I'm glad to help. Oh, and there's Bo Lee. Says, I went to Osaka last year and loved it. Best wishes for you and your family. How are the twins? Hope we can see them one day. Oh, yeah. They're doing well. Um, they take a lot of energy. <laughs> but uh, they're both doing well. They're growing. Getting, uh, boys getting healthier and stronger. So thank you very much. And if you come back to Osaka, please tell me on Gab. And, uh, you know, we'll meet. Maybe you can meet the twins in person. Oh, Alok became a teacher. Says, uh, your motivation helped me become an English-speaking teacher. I used to watch your uh, live shows, listen to your podcast to learn English. Listening again and again, I gained a lot, and finally I became a teacher. Well, congratulations, Alok. That's great. Now you can help others. Very nice. Topic for today, Nordine, is travel. Yeah, so here's another great thing. You can sometimes get jobs. Shakayek says... Great instructor. I work as a tour guide in Iran and Georgia. Great job. I communicate with different people around the world and I get new experiences. Fantastic. Really great. I've been to Georgia. Nice place. And like Slavika says, for traveling around the world, English is the most important and useful. For sure. Now, it's nice to learn other languages, too, of course. Uh, I'm not saying that. That's Of course it is. But, uh, but if you have to pick one, English is the most useful. That's without a doubt. We all, we all, of course, we all know this. I'm going to jump down to the bottom here. Yeah, so I just want to again say thanks to Marcos for the Super Chat donation. And thanks for Bo Lee for the super chat donation. That's quite nice. Ah, uh, Walid says, I'm a web developer. Is it possible to work as a freelancer when I travel? How much money do I need at least to spend for a day? Yes, it is, Walid, because I have met, when while I've traveled, I have met people who do exactly that, who work as freelancers. Um, a freelancer is kind of like an independent worker. Um... I've met people who do kind of computer stuff, people who do like design, like what you're doing. Web developing is a perfect job for that. 
And, uh, you know, you got to build up some clients, of course. You got to find clients. But, uh, you know, just you want to you know, just you just need to travel someplace where you have a you can find a decent Wi-Fi, you know, a decent Internet connection in your hotel. That's almost everywhere in the world now. So, yes. Now, how much do you need to spend per day? That really depends how you travel and where you travel. You know, so you can travel very, very budget in some countries, super low budget. Uh, I would say South Asia is a good one for that. So places like Thailand, Burma, you know, Myanmar, even Malaysia, parts of Malaysia, Indonesia, India, Nepal, Vietnam, Laos, you know, Cambodia, and parts of Central America too, probably. <coughs> and South America. Um, you know, in general, you'll find... Uh, you know, the bigger cities are, of course, usually more expensive, bigger cities. So if you uh, go to smaller towns and get away, then, again, you can often find a pretty cheap accommodation and quite cheap food by doing that. There are other ways to save money. You can uh, buy your food at grocery stores or local markets or on street markets, uh, usually much cheaper than restaurants. Um, what else? For travel inside of a country, you save money by if you do buses or trains, like, uh, and, you know, it depends on the class. You know, when I was traveling in India, I would do second class travel usually. Maybe I did third class for shorter trips, usually second class. Uh, but you don't, you don't travel first class, right? Uh, and I did some really cheap bus trips in, uh, in both Thailand and in, in uh, I mean not, well, Indonesia too, actually, and uh, India and Nepal as well. So all these ways, you can find ways, you know, you can do research and ways to cut, cut, cut your budget. Then, of course, you have to find, you, you have to be patient with the, the plane ticket. This is another area where uh, sometimes the plane ticket is the most expensive thing. So how do you save money? There's different ways. If you have a credit card, get a credit card that has miles, right? Bonus miles. And then you can save up and maybe even get a free trip once a year using your miles. Uh, other ways is you, there are some discount, um, different websites. I can't remember the names of them right now, but do some research on this. Discount plane tickets. If uh, sometimes, you know, you can get a good deal at the last minute. So if you're flexible, if you're flexible, you can find a good flight ticket this way. There are budget airlines, uh, of course, in some areas of the world. What else can you do to save money on? Uh, another way to save money on flights sometimes is to book your flight ahead, you know, kind of a long time ahead, like six months before. You know, just waiting, doing your research, waiting, go in the low season, right? Like if you travel to America, if you fly in January, the weather sucks, but you could probably save a lot of money on plane tickets. So this kind of stuff. There, there are many ways to do it. Yeah, Cleefy says, the great obstacle for me when I travel is food, especially healthy food. It's too expensive in restaurants and groceries. When can I find, for example, salads or natural food? How to solve this? It all depends, you know... Um, I think most groceries groceries usually have fruits and vegetables, so you can always eat them raw. You know, carrots, apples, oranges, you know, etc. Right? Uh, again, this really depends on the country, uh, so it varies by country quite a lot. Some countries have, you know, Thailand, for example, Bangkok and Chiang Mai, and a lot of actually places in Thailand has great street food that is cheap, cheap. When I was living in Bangkok. As a student for two years, I had a super low budget and I ate a lot of street food. So like pad thai and lots of other things. First of all, there's all lots of great fruit in, on, in the street food and it's cheap, cheap, cheap. Uh, you can get like eggs and rice and omelets and pad thai and lots of other Thai dishes uh, sold on the streets and very cheap. Cheaper than a grocery store. It's amazing and good taste. Is it healthy? Mm, some of it's healthy and some of it's not very healthy, but uh, but it's definitely cheap. 
So you can get this. You can usually get these kinds of things, uh, uh, you know, fairly cheaply. Grocery stores always have, you know, that that the fresh food section. So that's kind of where you go and try to do that. Do a little research before you go. You know, in general, you know, it is harder to eat healthy when you travel. It's true. Do some fasting <laughs> while you're traveling. That'll help. Yeah, and it ends talking again, kind of like what Vladislav was saying. Wow, so I got a super chat from Samuel Lunardi for $50. Is it dollars? Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much, my coach. You're my guide in life. Wonderful. And I'll read the rest of your comment in a second when I get down to it. That's very nice. Thank you. There's a nice mountain close to my town. When we need inspiration, we go there and do a five-hour hike. It can help if we can't travel abroad. Absolutely, these kinds of things. Even within your own city. I do this within my own city here in Osaka. I'll just go to a new part of the city. Like I'll just walk, take a long walking trip one day for a few hours, and I'll just choose different streets that I usually never walk on and go to different neighborhoods I've never been to and find different markets and that also kind of wakes me up and makes me brings my creativity and my energy up again. And it's a great way. Like this is how I learned Osaka when we moved here last year um, is that by just walking like this, just doing all these little walking places, I've learned a lot of the city this way. It's really great. You really get to know a city better when you walk it. And on, my moms and I were arguing over travel. What a coincidence. She tells me to be extra careful while traveling. It kills my motivation to travel. Please say some words for her extra care. Well, I mean, you're both right. You do need to be extra careful in a way because as a traveler, there are certain bad people who look for travelers, who look for people who uh, are outsiders, okay? Like when I traveled in India, okay? Most Indian people are wonderful, but there are some bad ones, just like all countries. And when they see me as a new young guy and I'm looking around like hey, everything's amazing and I'm confused, they see an easy target. So you do have to be more aware as you travel, especially in the bigger cities. You have to be a little more suspicious if someone comes up just talking to you for no reason. Maybe they're just nice, but often they're trying to cheat you in some way. So in that way, you, you, you should be careful. That's why I said in the beginning, when you plan a trip, read about the crime, read about how people cheat you, what kind of lies will they tell you, what kind of ways do they try to cheat you. Know all of that so you're ready. But here's the part where you're right. Don't let this make you afraid. Don't make this make you afraid, okay, and not travel. In fact, this is actually a way to build your confidence by learning how to deal with the cheaters and these uh, and these people. You actually will get stronger. It's part of the process of traveling. You become wiser, more streetwise, we say. You'll become more confident, less afraid. So don't use this as an excuse. You still got to travel. So don't, you, you know, you want to be cautious and smart, but not paranoid, okay? Not afraid. It's kind of a middle way. You know, Murat asks, is there any person from Turkey? Interesting. Okay, guys, one second. Just So let me, let me read Samuel's super chat question, which is really nice. Thank you for the donation. Thanks so much, my coach. You're my guide in life. I'm raising my babies using English, and you're responsible for my learning. Thanks, thanks, thanks. Well, that's so wonderful. Thank you, and that's great to hear. Raise your babies. You know, one parent, one language is such a great way to do it. We're doing the same thing, so. I speak to our babies in English, my wife speaks to them in Japanese, and they'll grow up to speak both. Samuel, and I, again, really appreciate the donations. Thank you so much. Eliseo Rail says, you have to make videos more active. Sometimes I feel bored. Well, if you feel bored, find another person. I'm not going to sing and dance. 
If you don't like, you know, I have this is my style. We talk about deeper things and deeper topics. If you're bored, find someone else. There are thousands of people on YouTube, millions, honestly. <laughs> thousands and thousands of English teachers with podcasts. I'm not for everybody. Oh, Alexi says, in lots of countries, the donate function isn't available. YouTube is an evil platform. Yeah, I know. That's why I don't depend on it. That's why I don't really promote it or talk about it unless I thank people who do it. But uh, don't worry about it. You know, uh, believe me, I'm thinking ahead, guys. I have, I have, I'm thinking long term about how to start creating my own systems. Uh, I still need, I have made a uh, walk and talk. I talked about this a little bit. But, you know, I have plans. I want to have my own video channel with an audio channel and social media that all my own, that I own and control, so I don't have to worry about all of this so much. And maybe then we'll have some kind of uh, supporter function where you can have a like a cheap membership to support the show, support uh, or, you, you know, a donation function or something like that. So I do plan to do this, uh, and I'm just kind of – researching and looking for the different software to use open source things um there's good stuff coming there's some promising things they're not quite ready yet but we're getting closer so don't worry you know in the longer term that's what we're going to do for now we'll use these evil platforms these evil channels but uh eventually we'll have our own A common question that I get many times from Ajit. I'm from Kerala, uh, which is India. I have a question. Can I listen to American English and British English at the same time? Is there any problem for a beginner level English learner? It's totally fine. Go ahead and do it. It's fine. You know, when I was learning Spanish, uh, trying to improve my Spanish four years ago, I would listen to Spain Spanish, Mexico Spanish, <laughs> Ecuadorian Spanish, Colombian Spanish, okay? There's some differences, but it's the same language. It's no big deal. Ah, now, Alexei, with another good point about travel, and this is why I had um, Anthony, Homemade Muscle. This is why I how I found him and why I love him so much and why I brought him uh, to interview. Alexi says, it's especially difficult to travel when you're trying to keep yourself in good shape. So f there's the food side, Khalifi talked about, and then there's the exercise side. This is how I really started focusing on body weight exercises or that home workout routines. Because I was traveling, a l I, I travel less now, but there was a time, probably five, six years ago, you know, really when I started Effortless English back in 2006, for the next five or six or seven years, my wife and I traveled a huge amount. Um, we were kind of, kind of enjoying it, kind of celebrating that you know we had this independence. So we just took so many trips and traveled so much. And I traveled for work too, trying to promote effortless English. And uh, I found I just couldn't. Going to a gym was just, it was too difficult trying to find a gym in every new place because we'd be moving constantly different towns, different cities, different countries. And, you know, many gyms, some gyms you can get a guest pass and some you cannot. You need to be, you have to know a member. And it just was a pain in the butt and I, I, I was not exercising much. So I just thought I have to find ways to exercise that I can do anywhere. And the two things I found was number one, running or walking. Just need shoes. I can run anywhere. You know, I've run in Bangkok. I've run in... Uh, Phnom Penh. I've run in little small towns through Cambodia and everywhere. <laughs> Nepal, Pokhara. So running's a good one. Or rucking, even better. And then the other form of exercise for like muscle and strength is body weight. So doing push-ups, doing pull-ups, doing handstands or handstand push-ups, body weight squats, um, body weight lunges, all uh, sprinting, all these kind of things where you're using your body 
And you, you can do it in your hotel room or outdoors in a park. And so you can keep yourself in very good shape. It doesn't matter where you are. Anywhere in the world, you can do your same workout. So that's why I started doing it, and now I just continue to do it because I love the simplicity. And I, I actually, I, I feel I get better results with the body weight stuff. Julia says, I'm going to use my English skills in my next trip to Poland in 2020. Enjoy. Lots of Polish Effortless English members, so maybe you'll meet some. Alex Akram says, my level is upper intermediate. Repeating your lessons many times, is that going to help me? Yes, it will help you a lot. It will help your fluency, especially your speaking. Should I do the movie technique also? Yes. Yes. If you're upper intermediate, if you're, if you're kind of getting into advanced now, also add the movie technique is a good idea. Yes. That'll help you with your listening and, and especially your vocab. And also start doing more reading with audiobooks. You can add in all this stuff. Each one improves a different area. Haha. <laughs> hey, Jay. How are, how are uh, Mochi-chan and Taro-kun doing? They're both doing very well. They're both they're both quiet right now. <laughs> Thanks, Bufendra. That's nice. Thank you. You remembered their nicknames. Yeah, like um, Abderamani says, traveling is the best way to find new things and new cultures alongside widening your knowledge, learning to be tolerant and confident in your life. All of these are great benefits. I, I agree. Antonio Torres, do you speak to your children in English or Japanese? I speak in English. My wife speaks in Japanese. This is called one parent, one language method. And it's a really good way to teach your children two languages as they growing up. So, of course, we're using our native languages. It makes sense. <laughs> Dario says, in Brazil, there are many people wanting to learn English. A curiosity, we have thousands of English schools, yet only 5% of the population are fluent. When will you come here? I don't know, but I definitely want to come to Brazil. Meanwhile, I hope that Brazilians will find me online. We have a lot of Brazilian effortless English family members, but we can always have more. Yeah, so Lisa is saying she was in Thailand. Lisa, I was in Thailand recently for three weeks. I was proud of my English knowledge. Thanks, AJ. I was able to ask for everything. I could say what I wanted. I didn't care about talking correctly. So, exactly. So she had a great trip to Thailand using English. <laughs> Merrick with an interesting comment. There was a solar eclipse yesterday. I saw people behaving strangely during this phenomenon. Many also see these various signs, and this is just the moon covering the sun. I don't know, maybe. It is funny. You know, uh, interesting thing about that, I used, there is something about the moon, though. Uh, I, I once had a job, I was a social worker in an emergency room. This was in uh, South Carolina in the United States. Emergency room, and I would ha I would deal with the kind of mental health problems, and there were surprisingly a lot of them. <laughs> but anyway, we noticed in the emergency room that during a full moon, it was always much busier. There were always more problems during the full moon every month. Every month, the emergency room became more busy with physical problems, but especially with mental problems, like crazy people. I don't know why. It's a mystery, right? So I mean, there's something to that idea. Okay, now Evgeny uh, Lavalov, La 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 sorry. What is the best place to visit in the USA? Hmm. If you don't have to worry about budget, where would I recommend? Um, some of my favorite places. I love New Orleans. New Orleans. Louisiana. That's a cool city. That's a unique city in the United States because it has a much different history. It was French instead of British, you know, until America finally bought it. But uh, its beginnings were French. 
and uh, so it uh, developed differently, right? It developed kind of its own culture. There's still people in Louisiana, the state, and the area in New Orleans that speak a, a it's called Creole or Cajun. They speak kind of a French English uh, combination language with some uh, African languages mixed in as well. Um, that's a very unique and interesting city. I would recommend New Orleans. Be careful. There are some areas of New Orleans that are very high crime, so do your research about that. But that old city, the old part of the city, the old southern parts and the old French areas are quite nice. Some of it's just drunken parties, okay? There's that part of New Orleans too, which I don't like so much. There is that. But there are other parts that are quite interesting. Their music, the old Dixieland jazz music, uh, there's some very interesting food that's only there in America. So New Orleans is a cool place. Um, I like Savannah, Georgia for a similar reason. Savannah is an old south town. It's in the south of Georgia. Um, and again, it has that old south feel. It's on the coast. So I like Savannah. I like these old places in America. Um, I'm just trying to think of interesting cities to visit that have a special character. <laughs> that are not super touristy. New Orleans is touristy, but other than that, I also would recommend try to do, if you like outdoor stuff, I think the number one thing about America is the wilderness. The, the, the best thing about the United States for travel is the wild areas because America has so many amazing national parks and state parks. And, you know, I mentioned the Appalachian Trail. You don't have to walk the whole thing. The whole thing takes five or six months. Um, but you, I used to just, when I lived in Georgia, I would just walk sections. You know, I'd take a weekend or take four days, and I would walk a section of the Appalachian Trail. That is really cool. Another amazing trail uh, that's a bit more difficult. It's higher mountains, but it's called the Pacific Crest Trail, and that's California. And uh, they go, you know, Yosemite is a famous area. It goes near Yosemite, but there, there's, there's section. It's a long, long trail, so you can find sections in California. Also, I think goes up into Washington and Oregon. But um, and not only the, those are the big famous ones, but there's so many other trails. So you just have to do your research because there's more than I can describe in an hour, uh, and just some amazingly beautiful places to camp and go hiking. Uh, if you're into like canoeing or whitewater rafting or rivers, there's great places to do that. Uh, you can do that in Louisiana. You can do that in Florida. You can do that in count many rivers. Whitewater rafting, I had a great time. There's some great whitewater rafting in Georgia and South Carolina. Um, yeah, man, on and on. The, the, I would say the natural parts of America are the most beautiful and interesting to me. There's a great outdoor culture in the United States. And then if you're into some, you know, if you have some hobbies, there's also great things to do. Like if you're into surfing, well, California, the West Coast, Southern California and Hawaii. Of course, you can't beat those places for surfing. Uh, kite surfing you can do in uh, Oregon. You can do in Maui. Uh, you know, there's it depends on your hobbies, that kind of thing. So lots of good places to visit. Not just the, you know, everyone goes to New York and. San Francisco <laughs> and L.A. But um, these are some of the other places I think are quite cool. Yeah, like MSC TV again says, I don't always have a purpose when I travel. I really like when I find new friends. They come to our house in Russia. I show them my city and they invite me to their country. Yeah, this is great, too. You can also do this, you know, when you're, if you live in a place where foreign people come you can meet them sometimes at coffee shops or restaurants or things you could volunteer to be a tour guide or something like that and you can meet them and make friends and show them your place where you live and meet lots of people and then when you travel maybe you, you make some friends and you can visit them and they'll do the same for you or when you travel you meet them and then you invite them to come visit you someday that's also nice we did that with the Camino. You know, we met a lot of, uh, we made friends on the Camino, Joe and I, and then we told them, you know, visit us sometime. And many of them visited San Francisco and we met them in San Francisco and 
would show them and take them to restaurants and show them around. It was very nice. Okay, a few more and I got to go. Hassan Habib says, thanks for beginning the Effortless English Movie Club. Don't forget my request for The Green Mile. Good one. And The Book of Eli. Another good one. I think this both movies have something spiritually to reveal among us. You're correct. They both have a spiritual message behind them. Two very good movies. We're, you know, this is the great thing. So many great books, and there's lots of great movies too. So we'll, we have many opportunities. Thank you for your uh, suggestions. Those are both good suggestions. I agree. Yeah, Tuan, Tuan mentions when you travel, you can put clothes and heavy things in your suitcase. Use it as a barbell for weights. Or as long as you have to, something to hang yourself, hang on, you can do some pull-ups too. Do I have my... Hmm, I'm looking. I have these cool little handles. Oh, I have to show you sometime. Where are they? Oh, I don't know where they are right now. I was going to show you. But anyway, they're these cheap little handles. That I use when I travel. Is that over there? No. Anyway, I have these handles, pull-up handles that go that I use on doors. You you there's a part, you put it over the door, and then you close the door and lock it. And then there's a li two little handles then. And the door holds the handles. And you can do pull-ups using any doorway. So you can use do do pull-ups in your hotel room. That's what I use when I travel now. Um, and they, they hurt my hands hurt a little bit when I do them, but it doesn't matter. I get my pull-ups, so you don't even need a bar because sometimes it's actually hard to find a pull-up bar. It's fine. It's hard to find a bar is, when you're traveling sometimes. So I just carry these little handles. Um, I'm trying to remember where I bought them. Monkey, monkey bar fitness, something like that. Um, anyway, uh, pull up doorway, pull up handles, something like that. Do a search. I'm sure there are several kinds people that people make. You buy them. They're they're really cheap. They're very very light and they're very small, easy for traveling. And so now I can always do pull ups when I travel. And yes, you can. Uh, you know, an easy way to make to get some weight if you want to do like say squats and add a little weight is just water bottles. Buy a, a bunch. You know, buy a water bottle. Usually people traveling, they're drinking bottled water. Save the bottles, fill them up with you know in the bathtub, and then you have a lot of them. That makes weight. Put it in your backpack, and then you can do some squats or some lunges or some other uh, even while you're doing pull-ups and push-ups, and it adds weight and give you a little bit tougher workout traveling around. All right, let me just jump to the end because you guys are typing fast. Yeah, Arian says, I learned Spanish and German with the help of your method, you rock AJ, your system works. Yeah, the over the general principles work for any language. That's right. Correct. Resistance bands, David, Lai Kin Chun, another exactly right or you can use resistance bands good for doing exercise while traveling yes a resistance band is like a huge rubber band <laughs> right and exactly right you can use that it makes your it can make any exercise more difficult you can also use them to make some exercises easier like you can use remember anthony talked about this where you use these pull-up bands it's it's kind of the same idea and it takes a little bit of the weight so it makes pull-ups easier if you can't do a pull-up but you can use them in other ways where it makes everything more difficult. And this adds, again, this exactly right. You Just don't break the hotel room door. I know, Cleefy, I've almost broken a few. Uh, occasionally, when staying in like some cheap ones and the doors are really thin and weak. Uh, yeah, I've, I, I know what you mean. I do have to be a little careful. Samuel says, I have two babies, one and two years old, almost twins. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck to you. Yeah. 
Jack Double says, I started listening to your podcast last month and really enjoy it. Someone recommending the shot someone recommended the shadowing technique for practicing speaking through the films or videos. What do you think about that? Yeah, do it. I like it. You can use my podcast and do it. You can shadow me. Yes, totally fine. I, I definitely recommend it. Ah, Fiverr. Yeah, there's a good one. Arian Absalon says, use Fiverr for freelancing. Yes, Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R. -R. I think that's how you spell it, right? F-I-V-E-R-R is a freelancer website. I use it myself. Now, I, I don't work on Fiverr, but I pay people on Fiverr. Like if I have a little job I need done quickly um, for the business or personally, uh, usually for the business, some little design I want or some little project or job, then I go on to Fiverr and I put the job, I post the job, and some of the freelancers, they will see it and they will say, oh, I'll do it. I'll do it for, you know, $20 or I'll do it for $50 or I'll do it for $10 or whatever. And then I'll just choose one and I pay them. So they make money independently as a you know, boss, you know, just from each project. And uh, I get some nice little, uh, I get my project and usually the quality is very nice. So yes, I'm sure there are other sites also. I'm sure there are other ones. But that's actually my, currently that's my favorite freelancer site is Fiverr. I've used it for many different things. So yeah, either if you want to hire people to do things for small jobs or if you want to get do work, uh, Fiverr is a nice one. Abbas says, thanks for all your efforts. Is it possible to have a live chat about dry fasting? Yes, we'll do it in two weeks because um, starting in two weeks, I think it's July 17 is the month of Shra Shravan, <laughs> uh, which is a fasting month. And I'm going to be dry fasting for one month, not, not a 30 day dry fast. I'll be doing 22 or 23 hour dry fast each day, eating once a day, but dry fasting most of the time. Um, so that'll be a good time to talk about dry fasting. The other thing is I will be messaging Cole Robinson soon to invite him to an interview. I want to interview him. I'd like to interview him this month about fasting as well. And we can, he's much more of an expert than I am. So we can certainly ask, I, I definitely want to ask him about dry fasting and also the snake juice or the salt water fasting, which, when do you use one? When do you use the other? You know, all the different methods and techniques. He has a lot of knowledge and a huge amount of experience. My fasting is going well. My weight is now 70.9 kilograms. Very close to my goal weight now. Very close. Van Ron says, one of the terrible things I heard about the U.S. is you can't see stars at night because of air pollution. Is that true? Uh, no, well, Los Angeles, maybe some cities, maybe, but not the countryside. Countryside's fine. The bigger issue for stars is what's called light pollution. And this is uh, many places. It's because if you're in a city and it's very bright at night, lots of lights, the sky becomes too bright. So most of the stars are not visible anymore. You won't see, you'll see some still, but you, uh, you won't see a lot of them because the sky's too bright because of all the lights in the town. So the best to see stars the best is to go far away from any lights at night, like on the ocean or out way out in the countryside, like that, on a mountaintop, something. Those are the best places for seeing stars. And you can certainly see those in America, but there's a lot of light pollution. This is nice. Sula says, thanks for your work. We really appreciate your help because even my son is able to understand you clearly and very under your beer, your very clear and understandable speech. Well, that's great. I, I, I like these stories of people learning with their children. It's very nice.
Uh, here's a few. Abraham's listing a few ones. Upwork, Fiverr, and Freelancer. So three different websites for freelancing. Upwork, I used to use them. They're probably a little more professional. Fiverr is more general. Lots of different stuff. And then Freelancer, I'm not sure about, but uh, it sounds good. All right, I'm going to do one more, guys, and then I got to go. It's my last one. Okay, here's the last comment about staying in shape while traveling. To stay in shape while traveling, I practice Tai Chi, says Zvonimir. Great. This is Yeah, you can also, they're kind of, uh, I guess we could call them traditional exercise systems. And this is another way you can do travel, I mean, a, an exercise at home or traveling or anywhere. Things like Tai Chi, yoga would be another one, right? Where there are, you can do like a whole yoga workout in a small room, a very small hotel room. You can do a whole Tai Chi or Qi Gong workout uh, or sequence in a very small area in, in a hotel room or outside in a park or something. So these kinds of uh, things are, are really great ways to stay in good shape when you're traveling uh, or when you're just at home too. Very simple and effective. I like it. All right, guys, so traveling. Traveling is powerful. I think we all love travel. Uh, I, you know, people who learn English are usually quite interested in other countries and traveling and international experiences and just like I am. <laughs> so it's wonderful. Thank you so much, guys. Um, oh, a quick, quick update real quick. Gab on Gab, the groups... Groups will be um, down, will be uh, closed for about two weeks, I think. Our Gab group will not work, not working for two weeks. Why? Gab is making some big changes, good changes, very good changes uh, to their system. We've got some exciting things happening on Gab. I'm very impressed with Gab. Listen to my walk and talk. I'll add it later tonight because uh, I talk about it more on my walk and talk for the audio podcast only. But anyway, um, cool stuff happening. They're making big changes. The first change happens to, uh, two days in two days, July 4th in America. They'll change the main uh, Gab pages and to the new software, the new system. That's step one. When they do that, they're going to turn off the, the groups. The groups will turn off. They Don't worry, they're not deleting them. They're not destroying them, but just kind of turning off for now. So they have to do this in two parts. So part one is the main site. You might expect some technical problems for a few days on Gab. It's going, it probably happens. It usually does. Okay, then when after part one's finished, then one or two weeks later, then they're going to change the, the group system, it's changing the software for the groups. They'll change that, maybe, I don't know, July 15, something like that. And then our group will come back again. Everything should be fine. Everything should be working better, hopefully. So we'll all talk more about the changes after they happen and why there is, this is act, some things they're doing are actually really, really good for free speech and for us specifically. Very impressed with what they're doing now. Um, as I said before, I got, in the very beginning, uh, I left Gab because of some, some major problems. I felt they were not doing well. But I, to give them credit, they really uh, they handled some very serious problems. They learned. They've improved. And now they're doing some really cool stuff. So d keep following me on Gab. All right, guys. Lots of love to you. As always, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Join my VIP program. Commit. Don't quit to my VIP program to speak English fluently, confidently, think in English. That's how you do it. Join, commit at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Thanks for the super chat. Buratoki, I appreciate your donation as well. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. See you tomorrow.